How's it going, beautiful people of Instagram? Good day to you. This is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's greatest living artist. And I'm ready to do a video here for you guys. I hope everybody's doing great. I hope everybody is staying positive, staying happy, putting your ish together. Uh, staying away from the negativities of the world and the negativities of your own world, your own mind. Here we go. I'm going to get started and I'm going to share with you guys a little process of doing a painting. An oil painting. One of the oil paintings that I love doing is the sunset painting. Now here's the reason why, okay, for those of you who are like, man, you're not sharing. Okay, well, for the crybabies that think I'm not sharing, I'm going to share with you guys why, okay? Here we go. The reason why, it's because it's dramatic. There's a, there's a dramatic effect in a sunset. Because you can put both very warm and very cool colors all together. Now, a lot of people think, a lot of people think a lot of things. <laughs> One of the things that a lot of people seem to think, a lot of artists, is that if you get the colors right, somehow that's gonna yield a higher price or or people are gonna know you better, or all sorts of BS that people come up with, right? And I'm here to debunk and demyth that. The only reason why it's awesome, it's because it's pleasant to look at. There's many things happening, but it does not, it does not mean anything. It does not have anything to do with, with uh, sales and marketing and all that stuff. That's all muscle, that's all, it's the person. It has nothing to do with the artwork. So I'm gonna share with you guys a little bit of what I do here. Let's get started. Bam, here we go. Put some light. You know what, I need my Starbucks. Just a second, I gotta go get my Starbucks. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> here we go, guys. Bam. Mm. It was foamy, still foamy. So let's do this. This is gonna be a landscape with a uh, dramatic, dramatic uh, sky, okay? So I'm gonna start out by doing this sort of deal. Again, my work is very intuitive and, and as I've explained to some of you guys, I'm gonna be doing some classes. Those of you who wanna join in, you know, join in. I'm going to be giving you guys the, the website very soon, the website uh, where I'm gonna be hosting the classes. These are gonna be uh, just full length classes where I'm going to uh, share with you guys the process of putting your palette together and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Now, some people have been looking at how I put my palette together, how I do my deal, and still feel like they're not, they're not landing it. The, la the reason why you feel like you're not landing it is because you haven't, I mean, let's be real, okay? Let's, let's debunk another myth. You haven't been practicing enough. So of course, it's not gonna happen overnight, guys. It's not, it's not, you're not all of a sudden gonna start painting like me or like anyone else overnight. It's gonna take practice. And, and if you're willing to put in the work, it's gonna work for you. If, you put in, if you're willing to put in the time and the work and the effort and the, the sleepless nights, you know? Because in your mind, when you go to sleep, if you're like me, this is, this is what I used to do. I used to go. I used to go to sleep thinking about color mixing, mixes of colors and 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 variations of compos different compositions and different colors and different themes and on and on and on. So if you're willing to put the time in, you're going to get the reward. You know, it's that simple. Don't put the time, you get nada. So it's all the same. It's the same thing everywhere in life. I don't. I don't want. I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea and think that. You know, it's uh, it's gonna happen without the effort. There's no way in hell anything's happening without the effort. You gotta have the right effort, the right mindset, and and keep it fun. You know, you you want to keep it fun. You gotta figure out where what you're gonna do to keep it fun, um, so that you don't you don't go through the the stresses of the artist. A lot of artists go through stresses. They're like, oh my god, I don't know. I don't know. How, I don't know how to keep it fun. I'm like, Ooh, maybe you're in the wrong. <laughs> you're you're in the wrong place, and <laughs> maybe you should be an accountant or something else. <laughs> I don't know. Like, if you can't keep it fun in art, you know, you're, you're you're sabotaging yourself really bad. 
just saying, check it out. So this is how it started, right? Mixing those colors, doing a little variation, a little play. I know some of you love that, um, the play on color. Check it out. It's, it's very high energy for me, right? My deal is very high energy. My deal is very, uh, there's, there's a certain level of enthusiasm that is required for me to start creating artwork. I, I don't, I don't just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I do things different. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I spent all my, all my, my younger years learning how to do composition so that, so that at some point I could just, you know, uh, break it and start playing with it. It reminds me of that quote by Picasso when he said he, 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 it took him four years to learn how to draw like Raphael in a lifetime or something like that to, to draw like a child. Uh, I certainly didn't draw like Raphael. Uh, but I, but I, not, not because it wasn't available. I think it's available to anyone who wants it. It was just not my jam. My jam was, I wanted to, I want to learn how to do it like Delacroix. I wanted to learn how to do it like, like Monet, like Matisse, like Picasso. Those were my, those were my, uh, my idols, right? Goya. I like the looseness of Goya, even though people think, uh, that his work was very tight. The court paintings were very tight, but his personal paintings were extremely loose and, and, and you know, they had something else going on. Uh, I, I think he was a bit of an impressionist himself. An expressionist slash impressionistic type of painter. It was just, uh, it was a different, it was a different jam. Just like uh, Turner, right? The romantics were where the romantic painters were headed uh, onto something. They were learning something. They were doing things differently. Romantic painters like uh, Turner, Goya. Um, what's the other dude's name? The famous guy, uh, Delacroix. These guys were were onto something. They were definitely they were colorists, right? Those of you who don't know what that is, it's worth a Google. It's just uh, people that started playing with color and really understanding. You know, understanding how to create mood and, you know, because there was a, there was a, there was a lot of schools happening around that time period. You know, there was a lot of schools of artwork happening. Uh, it was a very, uh, uh, who was the other cat that was happening during that time? There was a lot of them, but one of the famous one was, uh, I believe it was uh, Angre and, and I think it was also Camille Carot from France. And these cats were doing things in a very, uh, very cool way, but but they used drawing was the main thing, right? And and very precise drawing. It wasn't like, it wasn't so uh, abstract. But maybe 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 Camille Carot was more abstract than the rest of the game. But anyways, I don't want to overwhelm you with all my awesome knowledge in art. <laughs> All my awesome knowledge in art history. Uh, but, you know, they were doing things differently. They were doing things differently. The romantics were definitely doing things differently. They, they had an understanding of color that their contemporaries did not. And that allowed them to start uh, planting the seed for the Impressionists, right? I believe, and not just me, there, there's books about that, countless, uh, you know, examples of that. Of how the the impressionists learned from the romantics, right? What we call now the romantics. Uh, a lot of the impressionists were learning from Delacroix. Actually, Delacroix was uh, was the go-to, right? He was the go-to. People people were learning from him, and 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 of course, the impressionists were also learning from the from this cat uh, Manet, right? Because he was doing something even more more daring, more challenging. Uh, he was painting daily scenes, right? Which it was a no-no. Delacroix and the rest of the gang, they were still stuck on on creating uh, more historical subjects, right? So historical subject matter. Almost almost didn't touch the whole daily 
thing, right? I, 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 I think that Manet was uh, more of the urban type of guy. He understood urban life. You know, uh, so he was able to paint it well, and he was able to 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 actually start painting it when everybody was like, "Oh no, you don't do that!" You know, you don't do that like the uh, um, that famous painting of his. Well, all of his paintings were were urban scenes, one form or another. Even if they were um, pastoral, they were talking about very modern, contemporary, and urban subjects around surrounding it. You know, so. That's what this cat did, and, and he did it well. And the impressionists were like, dude, we want to be like you, master. You know, and, and he gave them that. He gave them that. He gave them an opportunity. And what I mean by opportunity is, is, is he was at the forefront, right, of what was happening. He was the avant-garde. I know that the paintings look like, oh, man, I can do that. Oh, hell, yeah, you, you can now that it's been done, right? But people didn't think that was possible. You know, people people thought that you, you could even go to jail for painting certain subjects. And and I'm sure people went to to exile just like Gustave Courbet, the other French guy, went to went on exile for that, right? For 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 agitating uh, agitating with his artwork and with his commentary. Imagine all the commentary that I do. If someone's like, dude, you can't say that. I can so say that. <laughs> <laughs> different times different times anyways guys check it out man I'm a master artist someone someone told me I was full of myself I'm like dude I have to be full of myself I can't be full of you I gotta be full of me this is how I get stuff done check it out <laughs> master artist <laughs> so there you guys have it let me sign my name somewhere around here Jose Trujillo, I am the world's greatest living artist. My signature keeps getting like uh, simpler and simpler. I don't know if it has to do with the work. I feel like my work keeps getting that. Uh, I'm, I'm not looking for brush economy. Uh, there, I, there's a lot of stuff happening right now where, where you do paint economy, brush economy. How do you do less with, how do you do more with less, right? There's a lot of uh, really great artists out there. Lipking is one of my favorite. If you ever hear this, Lipking, you're awesome. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Lipking, he, he, I think that's his last name, Lipking. He does some great stuff. Very great use of brush economy. If you guys don't know who he is, you guys go, you should go check him out. He's, he's, he's a great artist. I think he's based in Austin, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, you can find him in, on Instagram somewhere. By the way, he did not pay me to say this. He doesn't even know me. <laughs> so, but but he does that, right? He does that really well. That brush economy, paint economy kind of thing. It's it's a it's a new realism, right? My stuff, of course, as you can see, it's not. It's on the borderline of craziness and fauvism, and and that's how I like it because that's me. But I do like to use some sort of economy. And the economy is in the brush. It's in the palette. I, I don't like to overthink it. So my type of economy is, is really like just, uh, just shoot and figure it out later, you know. <laughs> Paint first and then you can adjust. So it's, a, it's, I'm, I'm, it's, it's really, it looks like it's time, but it's really not. It's a multitude of things. And you guys will see, the more you guys see me paint, the more you guys can see like, oh, okay, I see what this cat's about. Because it's not after you see a few paintings that you can start actually uh, noticing what the whole what the whole thing is about. So here we go. Check it out. Man, I'm good. Man, I'm one hell of an artist. Here's another thing, guys. You got to believe in your selfies. You got to work on that. Got to work on that. Gotta start, gotta start looking at your stuff with love. If you can't do that, the rest of the world's not. The, world, the rest of the world's gonna be like, the rest of the world's gonna buy to how you feel about it, I think. And and uh, this is why I am the world's greatest living artist, because it's just it's just the only way. All right, guys, take care. I will talk to you soon. I hope you guys like this. Give it some hearts. Give it some love. Share it if you're into sharing. I don't know if you can share on Instagram. I still don't know really how to use Instagram, but uh, uh, I'll figure things out. I think I'm just, after after a good while of using it, I don't know, maybe after a thousand videos on Instagram, I, I might start to figure it out, who knows? We'll see, we'll see how that goes.
Yeah. All right, guys. Adios. Take care. If I can. There we go.